We were talking earlier about how radical the left has gotten. And um, I want to play comedian Bill Maher, who uh, was on his HBO show Real Time. And he they're they're just saying the quiet parts out loud at this point. Here is Bill Maher on abortion. Not if you believe it's murder. You know, that's why I don't understand the 15 week thing or the Trump's plan is let's leave it to the states. You mean so killing babies is okay in some states? Like I can respect the the absolutist position. I really can. I I, I scold the left on when they say, "Oh, you know what? They just hate women. People who aren't pro life, they uh, pro choice. They just they don't hate women. They just made that up. They think it's murder, and it kind of is. I'm just okay with that. I am. I I mean, there's eight billion people in the world. I'm sorry, we won't miss you. That's my position on it. <clears throat> what? That's quite if, harsh, if, Bill. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not is sure that not your much. position if you're pro-choice? Isn't that mainly because you don't like children? I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. no. I mean, but if you are, you're, you said you're pro-choice. Mm. That's your position too. Mm. Mm. One of those moments where you're like, "Well, thank you for making my case for me." I guess. Clearly stunned. Everyone's wow. stunned. Shocking. It, thank you. Yes, correct. It is. If you're saying you're pro-choice, you are saying that you are pro-murder. It is one and the same. Thank you. Thank you for admitting that. Spiritually grievous, honestly, to be able to watch that video and understand that, well, to, to say, as you said, to say the quiet part out loud. I mean, if we're going to say, if you're going to admit that abortion is murder, can we also admit that gender modification is aggravated assault? Mm -hmm. Because these are both sac these are both sanctity of life issues. Yes. And I think, I think Bill Maher kind of intended to use this segment to own Trump to say, hey, you don't believe in anything. But that piece of video, Sarah, is one of the most nihilistic things you will ever see on television. Yeah. And the awkward laughter. The awkward laughter is one of the saddest things that I think you'll ever hear. Yeah. It's very much more revealing about Bill Maher's position than it is about anyone else's. And the reality is, is that America is going to have to face this and they're going to have to face it head on. Look, I'm unapologetically pro-life. I think everyone at this table is unapologetically mm -hmm. pro-life. Mm -hmm. But looking at the issue from a national scope, it's, it's very important that we recognize that we are winning on this issue. We saw a record overturning of Roe v. Wade which was just one of the most miraculous things we have seen in this country. Never thought it would happen. And just for the record, I truly believe on a personal level, this is the hill we die on. Yeah. Uh, this is something that we cannot miss because ultimately, this is in our founding documents. The right to life. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. It absolutely is. You know, I propose that we make June month instead of Pride month being Unborn Visibility Month. <laughs> like we have to rename this and reframe it because the reality is, is that people, if they will face the truth that Bill Maher explicitly said, I think it's going to be a lot harder for them to vote against a proposition that would allow unborn life to truly be valued where it should be. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, I don't, I, it was it's so painful like to watch the clip. I think you you can tell like that the producers didn't know whether to push the laugh button or the applause yeah. button. I mean, the guests on yeah. the set didn't know how to respond or yeah. like it's a comedy show, at least in theory, but he says something so egregious, like literally coming out saying, just to be clear, my position, Bill Maher, is that I'm okay with some murder. Right. That's got a tough position to defend. Look, I, I'm very, I make no bones about this. I, I'm extraordinarily proud to have had the honor of serving um, President Trump as his chief of staff at the United States Department of Health and Human Services, where, where we oversaw um, the boldest protections for the unborn in modern American history. I mean, we, we did something that Republican presidents previously had promised to do, but not kept their word on. We, we defunded Planned Parenthood. First time it happened in 15 years. I personally was honored to, to be tasked with leading the rollout of that initiative. Now, of course, Joe Biden is doing everything he can to undo that. And even uh, now that we're in a post-Dobbs world, he's trying to do everything completely illegally and unconstitutionally through my old agency, HHS, and, and the FDA. To, to, I just joined, joined a brief on this to backdoor Dobbs through FDA deregulation. I mean, Joe Biden, nobody in the Biden administration believes in deregulating anything, except somehow they want to make abortion pills right. as easy to get as possible. So he's trying to re-nationalize the abortion issue and, and backdoor Dobbs. And it's one of the Many reasons that I think states who believe in the Tenth Amendment, who believe in federalism, who understand that the federal government is supposed to be a creation of and subservient to the wills of the sovereign states, lead by example. We shouldn't just be content to complain down here at Texas when Joe Biden does things that are wrong. We need to lead the charge against an out-of-control federal government, not just on the life issues, but on the full panoply of public policy issues that confront us. Otherwise, our kids are going to inherit a republic that uh, where, where their freedoms and their liberties is something they just heard their grandparents talk That's about. Right. Hey, Amen. Sarah, did you? Okay. I'm, I'm sure you talked about the 
some of the screeching from the right about Trump's comments about abortion. I actually was gone when that happened. Well, so I, you know, just as a Trump supporter, I look at the situation, and I go, you can be upset about what he says, but you must admit without Trump, there is no yes. Dobbs. Yes. There is still yes. abortion in Texas without Trump. Right. So you can say all the right things, but appoint Justice Roberts, Justice Souter, right. and, and not get the right result. Yeah, exactly. Um, I totally agree. If you like this clip and you want to see the full episode, click here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, come on, you know you do. Click here.